Uh, kia ora, welcome to Guru 54's discussion. My name is Lawrence Essendon and my major is computer science. I'll be the facilitator for today. So before we start off with the discussion, can you guys please introduce yourselves? Tēnā koutou katoa. Nō ki mire te ahai. Ko James Payne ahai. Nō reiwa, tēnā koutou katoa. Hi, I'm James and today I'll be discussing from the point of environmental sciences. Tēnā koutou katoa. Nō whakatū aho. Ko Julie Edwards aho. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, hi, I'm Julia and I study geology and chemistry, but I'll be speaking from a geologist's perspective today. Tēnā koutou katoa, no ototahi aho, ko Deline Maris aho, no reira tēnā koutou katoa. I'm Deline and I'm going to be talking from a psychologist's perspective. So, guys, so um, I'll be asking questions based on the topic. So, firstly, relating to your field, can you briefly state how communities require scientific input? Society is the product of the interaction between people and places. Therefore, the environment that surrounds it it represents a significant aspect of society, significant concept that society values is the interaction with nature. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, it is, I believe geology is how the natural environment interacts with society. Um, developments cause huge strain on the natural environment as it has to withstand these man-made infrastructure, um, which increases, this, increases society at being at risk of the natural disasters. Um, therefore, as a geologist, I think um, having that knowledge um, like relayed to society will help reduce those impacts. Yeah, well, with communities, we need psychologists to help our people understand and get through their mental health problems. One in six New Zealand adults have been diagnosed with a mental disorder at some point in their lives. The role of psychology in taking care of one's mental health is essential in benefiting communities and the health of its people. Sweet. Interesting points, guys. Anyways, our next question, Candeline, can you please tell me about the initiatives within communities that don't require scientific advice? Yeah, sure. It comes down to the simple statement that opinions should not override facts. A statement that counts as a scientific fact has been deemed legit legitimate. A person or a group of people should not be able to argue against those scientific facts with their own made up facts. In other words, their opinion, which they have no scientific evidence to support that opinion. If we allowed opinions to override facts, this would create chaos, be detrimental to the progression of the community, possibly affect physical or mental health while spreading ignorance. And that's a really good point. Um, I think from a geologist's perspective, um, initiatives that don't require scientific um, advice are probably small-scale initiatives, such as um, ones that only affect our individuals. So maybe like the development of a vegetable garden or something like that. Um, I don't think that requires um, a lot of scientific advice. We're able to appreciate nature and the environment while think about, thinking about the processes and scientific aspects that are happening around us. Hobbies that engage in the outdoors are a good example of how you can interact in the environment without science. So thanks for sharing, guys. Um, next question is moving on to initiatives within communities, which require scientific advice. Uh, Julia, can you please start with an example? Yeah, sure. So um, before how I said that was small scale to require advice, I think larger scale um, ones that influence the regeneration of society, I think requires advice. So. Um, for me personally, there's a bit of a debate going on um, in my local town about having a, a dam to um, restore and contain water for next generations. Um, and I think um, that requires a lot of advice through from geology, the ground, surface and stability and all that kind of stuff and how that's going to affect society. And then also communication is key between um, like the development of it and how that's going to affect those so they, if they know if they can like build houses there and stuff like that. Yeah. Much of the infrastructure that we build and interact with throughout our lives is designed to last many generations. This means side effects will last that long as well. This is why it's important to look at environmental science between large, for large infrastructure, otherwise we risk ruining these environments for future generations. What's well, of mental health needs to be emphasised. Communities need psychological advice on how to take care of their mental health and how to recognise whether someone is suffering. Mental illnesses should be given the same attention as physical illnesses. They are both different forms of suffering, but arguably equally strong and could e tragically end in death. There is a common misconception that mental illnesses are a choice and that it's their fault, which is not the case. Nobody chooses to suffer from illnesses such as depression, anxiety, schizophrenia and many more. Feeling like a victim of your own mind, speaking from experience, is painful and extremely dis disruptive to one's life. Mental pain is incredibly difficult to escape and communities need to be educated on mental health and people should feel that they can reach out for help more. Sweet, very nice. So uh, to finish off this discussion, can James state where scientific advice has gone wrong within society? Many people have become confused by the abundance of information that is available to the general public in the modern era. Often the media can accidentally promote unscientific or untrue concepts. 
This can lead to the public taking actions and positions that may not be scientifically valid. A good example of this is climate change. The evidence for it is staggering. However, the issue is often discussed in the media as if it's a debated scientific issue. This is an example of how it is important that we clearly portray science to society. Mm, yeah, so that, that's a really good point. Um, I also, going along with your communication, an example of a reservoir that was created by a, um, a dam, so it was a man-made situation, a society weren't aware of all the um, geological aspects that could affect them, and um, there was a massive landslide that went into the reservoir and it um, created a wave, and made a wave over the dam, and it killed about 3,000 innocent people. And so I think that a lack of communication between science and society is a huge problem, and um, I think... By bridging that gap between them, it's going to uh, reduce a lot of a lot of those issues and impacts. Well, I think our main problem now, as mentioned before, is giving mental health the same attention as physical health. Both are real problems that require treatment, and people should be listened to and treated by well-experienced psychologists without having pay, having to pay two hundred dollars per session. General practitioners should be able to refer patients to psychiatrists more frequently, and to ensure that their diagnosis is correct and reduce the likelihood of misdiagnosis and overprescription of medications for things like depression and anxiety. I fought to be able to be referred to a psychiatrist, and others out there will have experienced the same. That shouldn't be the case, and this is a problem we really need to start considering. Sweet. All right. So, uh, based on these points, we can uh, conclude that science and society must be clear, and the lines between fact and fiction is blurred. So basically, there must be a clear communication between scientists and the community when it comes to taking on new initiatives. So uh, yeah, that pretty much finishes our discussion, guys.